Hey boys and girls, here we are at Faraday Future. And uh, what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about what Faraday has allowed us to talk about on their product. So we'll talk about the car in a little bit, but let's talk about what's underneath that car, what makes it go. So what you, hear, what you have here is the, the rear dual motor system. So you have two motors that are connected together. These right here, these are the inverters. So these inverters are connected to the motors and the gearboxes. These, this is the way that you want to try and design your product as far as I'm concerned. So that you've got an integrated modular package as compact and as, as uh, efficient as you possibly can. Now, you'll also notice how short these leads are. These, these are very short cables for, uh, for bringing in the, uh, the, high, uh, the, high, uh, the high voltage into the, uh, into the inverter to make this work. This is the front motor. Um, it's a single motor, and that's probably fine for what they're doing. Now, uh, I have made comments in the past about one thing that I can't understand why, um, why Tesla hasn't done it, and that is to move to a hairpin design on the uh, stator. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a chance and see if I'm strong enough, but there you go. This is why they call it a hairpin design. So, these are the hairpins that go in, and I showed you a second ago the closed off end. This is a much more effective, efficient way of putting the copper into the uh, stator. Um, by doing this, I've eliminated the winding. Uh, there's lots of different terms for that, but in essence, it's wound. Uh, uh, the, the Tesla vehicle is wound, and this is a hairpin. And I recommended that maybe they should check that out uh, at... Um, at uh, Tesla. Now, this is what the gearbox looks like. And for those of you who have seen in the past the gearbox that I've shown you that came out of Tesla or, or maybe the, uh, the folks at, uh, at uh, Porsche or whatever, this gearbox is much smaller. And you'll notice that it's got planetary gears in it. So it's a little bit different than what everybody else is using where they're using just spur gears. This is the inverter package and this is what it looks like inside. Now, they're using parallel um, IGBTs, and that cuts down the amount of size that you're going to need. So this is a very efficient way of making it happen. And I, I got to tell you, I'm very thankful that Faraday has allowed me to talk to you all about this. So let's move over to the uh, battery pack. <clears throat> so they're using 2170 batteries, but it's, uh, or cells, but it's a little different in that uh, from a cooling standpoint, Instead of having little plates and whatnot that will wick away the, uh, the, the, uh, the heat from these batteries, these are immersed, which means that they're surrounded by a non-conductive liquid. This, this non-conductive liquid pulls the heat away and then it goes through their cooling system. Now, for those of you who watched the uh, battery day shows that I, I had, I guessed that Tesla was gonna go to something like this. This is like that layered board that I showed you before. And this is going to sit on top of the, uh, the batteries. And it'll sit right on top like that. Now, that's just sitting there loosely. But that's kind of how um, you're going to see the, the current travel uh, to, to make these cells all work together. Now, <clears throat> over here, OK, so that's what this is. But over here is what it looks like when you want to put them together. So uh, some people don't like the term uh, like Lego blocks, but this connects to each other. And guess what? It looks a lot like Lego blocks. And that gives them some versatility so that they can put as many as or as few um, batteries into the product as, uh, as they want. So let's spin around here and have a look at what they've done for their skateboard. Now, um, some of you know that I threw a lot of rocks at Tesla for, uh, for the number of components that they had just for <clears throat> uh, what we call a wheel inner. This is one piece, and that's what Tesla should have come up with on the Model 3. And as I mentioned already, um, this, is a, uh, this is a beta version of what, uh, what they're going to come up with. But, uh, but in essence, it's probably similar to what they're going to put into production. Now, you can see here that they've got crush cans and they've got a front end and rear end. That means nothing to me. I want to know more about what the battery box has to say. If we have a look at the battery box, you can see how these things are connected. And you can see that they can expand and contract depending on 
<clears throat> what size vehicle they want, want to have. So uh, we're going to go and take a look at that vehicle right now. But this is a, this is a good design. Nothing wrong with this. I'd, I personally, if it was possible, I'd, I'd have those castings. But you know what? <clears throat> this is just fine for what they're doing here at Faraday. OK, so let's go and have a look at the car itself. First off, um, if we can get a wide shot, this is a very unique style. It's not American. It's not European. It's kind of its own, uh, it's, it's its own creation. And I like it when, uh, when I see something that I've never seen before. Let's have a look at the interior, which is really uh, uh, kind of dramatic as far as I'm concerned. And here we go. And I'm opening the back seat first. Now, why in the world would I want to do that? Because you know what, friends and neighbors? That is a back seat that I can do my job in. This is the ideal um, limo, if you like, for an executive. So right now, I don't want to classify myself as an executive, but right now, if I've got a job that, uh, that needs immediate attention, a customer that wants to have something right now, I, I, just, screwed, I just screwed myself. Because in the, in the, uh, in the car, in the, uh, in the Tesla 3, I haven't been able to do a heck of a lot. I can't use my computer, and I'm uh, old, I'm blind. I can't hardly see what's going on inside of my, uh, my cell phone. Even if I blow it up, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. I really need, I really would like to have my tablet, my, uh, my computer. So if I have this, I can, I can sit here, I can get my job done. These are zero gravity seats, okay? I will tell you, I love the Tesla seats, love them. They are, I don't have any back pain whatsoever. We've been driving forever. I have no back pain. And, uh, and it's a little tough after you've gone three, 400 miles to walk after that. But actually, it's a good seat. But you know what? Zero gravity seats are even better. They're really great for, uh, for uh, total relaxation. And that's what you've got here. <clears throat> and if this is a total autonomous vehicle, or somebody else is driving and I'm back here, there is a gigantic screen. It's not down right now, but there's a gigantic screen that I can link from my computer so that I can read, I can separate, I can get my job done in a hurry. Because that is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be bringing work or profit back to my company. This, this, is, uh, this is as good as anything. And I've already talked to these folks about it. Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Qatar. This is the kind of, this is the kind of car that these guys are going to want to have. So anyway, let's have a look at this. I really love this. I, lo I love this, uh, this motion here. That little butterfly motion, I absolutely love it. That is spectacular. This, this is a great way to show off to a mm, neighbor, or better yet, to impress the daylights out of whoever you're going to be picking up if you happen to have a limo like this. Now let's just uh, have a look inside here if Corey can uh, pop in. Let's have a look at the interior. <clears throat> the interior here is, is a little bit different than what you'd find in a Tesla. You've got the big screen, which I absolutely love. But there's something else that's, uh, that's kind of cool here. And that is that my controls that I would normally want to fool around with um, are available. Um, and I see them all the time. So I don't have to fish around and find out how fast I'm going and whatnot. It's right there. There's a lot of good things that I like about the, uh, the Faraday. I think that this car has got some, some real legs, and I believe that one of these days we'll, uh, we'll get a hold of one and maybe we'll tear it to pieces. But based on the cost of this thing, uh, maybe not. <laughs> not for a long time. Anyways, thanks a lot, boys and girls, uh, for, for tuning in. Make sure that you're out there uh, tipping those cashiers, and stay tuned for more stuff here at Monroe Live. Thanks. We'll see you. Bye.